spoon feeding you the material the way that anyone can understand. You will learn how to literally write a neural network with pen and paper and your eyes will open. You will be able to explain large language models to your grandfather and you can expect compensations up to a million dollars per year on the top end for research positions. Progress in data science has been through the roof in 2023. Generative AI went mainstream and is already reshaping industries. Salaries for data scientists in certain domains quadrupled. There are currently over half a million of open jobs in the US alone. Now is the time to become a data scientist. I'm not going to imply that my plan is the only right way to go. There are certainly other routes. All I can say is that I've been doing this for nine years. I've started from scratch without prior programming knowledge, without a technical degree. I've grown from a junior data scientist to a head of machine learning and brought up quite a few people along the way. This plan turned out to be effective. The ultimate goal that I would set for myself if I were to start over right now is generative AI. But the path to this qualification has some unobvious deviations. And with that in mind, let me tell you what will it take to become a good data scientist and actually get a job. Step 1. Learn Python. Just Python. Data science learning curve is steep and having to learn a programming language from scratch together with machine learning concepts will become overwhelming. Ideally is to get comfortable with the environment first and then proceed. Plus Python is a professional already. With enough practice you can apply for back-end development jobs right away. There are two courses that I advise in a sequence and this part can be completed in under a month. I'll post the links to the selection of courses down below for each step of the journey. As a result of the first step you should start building up your portfolio with at least one showcase project. You can make an API and host it somewhere in the cloud and I've got a video with this tutorial in production should appear here shortly. Or you can build an open source Python library with some automation code that you have learned within your lessons and push it to Python package index so that anyone could pip install it. And I have explained this subject in detail over the course of two videos and you can find them in the description below. Projects like this will add value to your future CV and you learn many things along the way. And if your library becomes popular, this will immediately make you stand out. Step 2. Learn Git. This is a version control system used by all the data scientists, software developers and anyone doing programming. This may sound counterintuitive at this stage, but if you're serious about data science or any software development, this is the best time to learn Git and start applying it in your workflows. Three reasons. If you don't know how to use Git, no one will take you seriously. You'll have to do it sooner or later, so why not now? You will start building up your programming credibility much sooner than you normally would, because Git history is transparent and and it builds up over time. So when it's time to apply for your new job and a recruiter will study your profile, it will already look great. Step 3. Learn data science. And this one is less straightforward because nowadays the field is more diverse than ever. Traditional data science, deep learning, computer vision, natural language processing, signal processing, machine learning, generative AI, which also has its subdivisions like large language models, multimodal applications, diffusion models, they overlap and a good data scientist can find their way around all of them and you don't have to study everything in detail. There are a few fundamental steps that you should cover to be able to work in all these domains. I've conducted over 200 interviews hiring data scientists and I've noticed that the ones that have niched down to a specific topic couldn't answer basic questions. What I'm saying is that starting your journey from learning generative AI, which is our final goal, is a mistake. You have to develop a backbone first. Here is a sequence. Traditional machine learning, deep learning, the backbone, and then generative AI specialization. Traditional data science is all about structured tabular data, that is credit scoring, customer churn, demand prediction, and so on. A year ago, I would argue that this is the end game, but now I have to say that the industry has moved on. The market still has a big demand in this domain, but a rapid influx trend into generative AI is obvious. Nevertheless, traditional data science is still 50% of the job market, and learning this subject will build up basic knowledge that you need to have. The stuff that any seasoned professional has to know regardless of the data science domain they apply for. Plus, this obviously will give you much more options when you will be applying for your first job. I've linked just one course that will get you up and running from scratch, but ideally I would advise you to additional participate in a few Kaggle competitions just to feel what it's like to be working with real-life data. Kaggle can significantly build up your skills and if you manage to get into the top 10% in at least one competition, 
There goes your second achievement in your future CV. Moving on, deep learning fundamentals. Generative AI is all about neural networks. Today, deep learning tools are so mature that you can build a complex convolutional neural network with just 10 to 20 lines of code. And many people stop there. But this is yet another mistake, because not knowing what's under the hood will not let you pass an interview. It will not let you progress in generative AI effectively. If you have never coded up a backpropagation function in pure NumPy from scratch, consider all your efforts a waste of time. Plus it is crazy interesting and very simple once you get explained what is what. Deep learning specialization from Andrew and G is objectively the best material in the world. And you don't have to complete all five courses. I've selected the ones that are required and linked them down below. With these materials, you will learn how to literally write a neural network with pen and paper and your eyes will open. Let's pause here. At this point, you can already start applying for data science jobs. Of course, you're gonna have to explain your future employer why you, the person without any prior experience, are the best man for the job. And I have elaborated on this topic toward the end of this video. Now it's time to get into generative AI. Firstly, I strongly encourage you to watch a few talks of Andrei Karpaty on the subject. The man used to be a senior AI director at Tesla, a founding member of OpenAI and worked at Google Brain. He's one of the brightest minds out there. But most importantly, he's practically spoon-feeding you the material the way that anyone can understand. And don't just watch, code along. One of the videos will teach you how to build a baby chat GPT from scratch using just your laptop. If you spend a few days of concentrated work on these videos, you will be able to explain large language models to your grandfather. After this, you should shift to a more structured study with a three-week course, Generative AI with Large Language Models. There you will get foundational knowledge, practical skills and functional understanding of how Generative AI works. Going deeper is a great resource from the same guy that taught you about deep learning. Another guru. Deep Learning AI is a collection of courses on various subjects. There are quite a few, they are all free, very short and straight to the point. At this stage you'll know which ones to choose. This step will give you practical experience how to build production grade LLM systems. I wish I could say that's it, this is all that you need to know, but this is not the case. Getting into data science or software development in general is a lifetime learning commitment. An exciting one, by the way. Studying the above will give you solid grounds to apply to any job in the industry or even start your own project or develop your own product. So what's next? I mean, what kind of work can you expect to be doing after all of this? Let me put it in hierarchical order based on the current market demand. Python backend development. I know this is not what you had in mind when clicking on this video, but the fact is that any company with an IT department has a demand for backend developers. And based on what you will have learned, you will have this option open for you. Traditional machine learning. This is the current majority of the ML job market and there are a lot of great and exciting challenges to work on. The pay is great and the options are vast and diverse. Applied Generative AI creation of applications that leverage the already trained large language models or multimodal models through APIs. This is not the actual development of large language models from scratch because the amount of data and compute resources that are required to train and run such models in production is beyond the budget of the majority of employers. There is just a handful of companies that can handle this. On the other hand, the models that are already available to the general public through convenient APIs have developed a whole new research direction geared toward building applications leveraging these models. For example, creation of an e-commerce sales assistant, a chatbot with a large language model that has access to your products database and helps customers find and reason between the products you have to offer. The next one is Research Generative AI. And from my point of view, this one is the most interesting, the tip of the sword. Unfortunately, there is a very limited number of jobs on the market and consequently very high competition. Only the best of the best have a shot at this. And you can expect compensations up to a million dollars per year on the top end for research positions. Build your own product. This might be the first priority for some of you, but the reason this is last on my list because the list is based on the proven market demand and there is obviously no demand until you have built it and tested it on some audience. This is certainly a good option and most definitely will be a side project for many of you. I still haven't touched on many other important topics like model deployment into the production environment or how to make an effective data science CV. 
But these and many others are the topics for separate videos, which you can already find on my channel. And frankly speaking, if you get this far, trust me, you'll know what to do. If there is anything else you feel that I forgot to mention, or there are specific topics you would like me to dive deeper into, let me know in the comments below. And see you on the other side.